Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Bhavani and welcome to this edition of Ask Me Anything with Top Specialist. Today I have with me Dr. Manjula Anagani, a renowned and distinguished Padma Shri Award winning obstetrician and gynecologist who will be answering some of the most frequently asked questions about endometriosis. Hello Doctor. Hi Bhavani. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> okay, so let's begin. What is endometriosis just so everyone can know? Yeah, I think that's a very uh, fairly uh, important topic on which we are talking today because it's become uh, almost like an epidemic nowadays. Mm -hmm. See, what we have to understand is what is the lining of uh, uterus is something what we call mm -hmm. it as endometrium. Mm -hmm. If the endometrium, jobi hai, whatever it is, it has to be in the right place. Mm -hmm. If it is not in the right place in another place, that's when the problems start. Right. Okay. So this endometrium lining, which instead of being only in the uterus, mm -hmm. it starts going and then developing on the ovary or the tubes or the peritoneum or any part except spleen. This mm -hmm. is one disease which can affect any organ in the body. Right. So this is what is called endometriosis. So then what happens? What is the problem? It is going, it is like a parasite living there. What does it do? Mm -hmm. But what happens is every month you do know that endometrium sheds, endometrium forms, endometrium sheds. Then every time there is a menstrual bleeding happening. Mm -hmm. But the uterus, the lining sheds and then you have a menstrual bleeding coming out. So mm -hmm. what happens to that uh, endometrium which is shedding in the other places? The so bleeding is happening. It, exactly. It cannot come out. Mm -hmm. So it starts accumulating there. That's when they form cysts or that's when they form the additions and then there's a lot of pain and everything starts coming. That is why this is the worst disease any woman can get. Because it's a True. quality of life thing which is going to be affected. The pain, the lack of uh, infertility that yes. comes along with it. Exactly. The two common thing with which they present, Bhavani, like you just said it, it is exactly. one is pain, one is infertility. Exactly. And it's a disease which affects them in so many ways. Yes. Exactly. Um, let's talk about how they can be diagnosed when they get this endometriosis. Right. See, when we spoke about it, how much, when we, we just spoke about pain and then um, infertility mm -hmm. part of it. See, these are the two main complaints with which a woman comes, especially in India. They only come to a doctor only when it is really affecting their thing. See, uh, when we said it is an epidemic, it affects almost 10 to 15 percent of the women in these times. Mm -hmm. But if the woman of infertility is picked up, it is almost from 30 percent to 70 percent of women are having wow. it okay, because of endometriosis. So what do we do when they come? Is it just the pain and the infertility? No. If you start going back and retrospectively I'll see that what is happening to them, they can just present like loose motion, they can just present like cyclical pain, they can just present like anything under the sun, any pain. Mm -hmm. But only significant thing what we see with them is that it is cyclical mm -hmm. and it can come around the periods time it is going to be painful. So initially, mm -hmm. because she, the kid is a young kid, they'll be going to pediatrician, then to the, the general physician, then to the gastroenterologist, mm -hmm. finally to the gynecologist. Mm -hmm. And at 14, 15 years, you won't be looking at any disease like that. Right. So it usually takes around 9.8 years to almost 10 years mm -hmm. to even detect that the child must be or a woman must be suffering from endometriosis. Yes. So this high degree of um, uh, suspicion and clinical uh, this thing is needed to detect that. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about all this pain, 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 uh, the second thing what we spoke is infertility. Right. right. So first after just after marriage or anything it's the when we say when I people come to me and say this sort of pain I have during periods uh, we ask a straightforward question what is the sort of pain you are having what is called dysmenorrhea mm -hmm. so does it come only on the first day and then go off on the second day or is it something like Hyderabad roads where it is congested <laughs> so much that three four days before periods it come it continues throughout periods and three four days afterwards mm -hmm. that is a deadly thing out of 30 days in a month Imagine you are that. suffering for almost 10 to 15 days because the whole blood is completely congested there right. so that is a sort of quality of life it affects in pain when it comes to that then they get the woman gets married mm -hmm. then then what happens next like I said the blood which is not going out so it, it has in. to be stay there and then it starts getting uh, adherent to each other the organs mm -hmm. gets fused into each other mm -hmm. so there's a lot of pain when they have intercourse the family life is disrupted the 15 days she's suffering with pain and then her mood swings because of the pain and quality of life so that itself is such a terrible ordeal for the woman that it ends up to a lot of uh, interpersonal relationships mm -hmm. and the marital disharmony too. So when we are looking at endometriosis, not just the symptoms, uh, we look at you know the psychological aspect of it mm -hmm. also. That is what is very, very important because as a kid, they'll have um, lack of school. They, they bunk the school because of the pain and also mm -hmm. they'll be literally backwards in the studies. True. You know, they mm -hmm. lag in their thing, their concentration, focus, because pain is taking such a huge time of their life that they would not be thinking of anything else as priority. Right. So the priorities in their life and winning mm -hmm. is something which is goes, goes in their ambition, focus, everything goes down there. So everything affects the quality of Absolutely. life. The pain is unbearable. 
Exactly. Let's talk about a little bit about how it occurs in the first place. Because people wonder, can it affect me? How does it happen? Is it a lottery issue over here? But it sadly could yeah, be. <laughs> right. See, let me tell you one thing. Like I said, first of all, when we started speaking about endometriosis, we said it is increasing nowadays. Right. And we also said it is almost like an epidemic nowadays. Right. And why are we looking at why, what are the diseases? Why is this disease increasing? When it is, was it there before also? Mm -hmm. Yes, there is a genetic element which may, may be a factor. Mm -hmm. It will just tell us that these are the people who are susceptible for it. Mm -hmm. But there should be something which precipitate that. Right. So that is again man-made now. It is mm -hmm. our environmental pollution, especially the plastics mm -hmm. and the sanitary napkins which have a plastic cover. All mm -hmm. this by being just being proximal to their uterus and all, mm -hmm. which changes. So what exactly is happening is in these people who are exposed to these dioxins, whatever we eat, dairy products, everything, they are uh, they sting into PC polychlorinated mm -hmm. biphenyls and uh, dioxins are formed. Right. This right. is what is the out product of anything. What we when we abuse the environment, it gives us back. So, or kajat ka se. Right. So, that's how it gives us back. And then what happens is that is, um, uh, we all talk about women and the hormones, right? Mm -hmm. We have two hormones, estrogen, progesterone, right? right? There should be harmony in it. Yeah. So, in this thing, in the, the way it affects the gene and the gene processes, there will be increased production of estrogen. Right. And the progesterone, what is there, will not be acting properly. Mm -hmm. Means the effect of the progesterone is not going to come properly. Right. That's when this the whole endometriosis worsens. The disharmony between completely the two exactly. everything. So there are so many other theories also, which is there, which is right. metaplastic theory, where you know a little amount of you know, some irritation of dioxins can stimulate that lining to change into itself into thing. Sometimes it is the retrograde. You know, whenever there is a blockage to mm -hmm. the uterus because of something like a septum or something, the blood going back can implant there, right, and then right. again they can start. So so many theories come, but metaplastic theory is now what is happening which okay. is increasing means uh, uh, anything which tissue which is there which is insulted because of this environmental mm -hmm. issues which we are doing can change its structure so its structure changes mm -hmm. and then it suddenly thinks that I will develop into endometrial lining and start behaving like one so mm -hmm. that endometrioma when you say that right, is right, the, right. on the endometriosis in the ovary which is the commonest of this thing of endometriosis mm -hmm. so the normal cyst which is physiological cyst the mm -hmm. egg follicle can suddenly change by itself into that or, or sometime this endometrium going sitting on their ovary mm -hmm. can imaginate inside mm -hmm. and then again form the endometrioma. So there are so many, nothing is one thing, you know, it is always multifactorial. Exactly. We need to understand that we should not precipitate it and nowadays it has become epidemic only because of our type of diet we eat mm -hmm. and the environmental insult we do to the environment. Is there any way we can prevent it, do you think? No, Maybe? I think yes, we can. That is something where, you know, getting exposed to this environment pollution, especially the plastics is something if we can come down drastically. Mm -hmm. I think government has to take a strict this thing on it and it is happening in many countries where they mm -hmm. have already banned. So when we start banning it, half of our dioxins will come down. That's so that a makes thought. a huge thing. That's and a the thought. second thing is, yes, Girls out there, please remember that use sanitary napkins which has a absorbable cover on it and not the plastic covers because being nearer to the, ut the uterus and the lining of endometrium, it has a huge impact having a uh, plastic covers on it. So organic sanitary napkins, not having a bleached cotton rayon is something which we have to look at. That's something very important that we can spread the message yes, out because yes. a lot of us still use those plastics. Yes. Exactly. Um, let's talk a little bit back about who is mostly affected, which age group is mostly affected because they, you know, they don't know. Mm -hmm. People may not right. be aware. So let's talk about yeah. that a bit. Like I said, Bhavani, like no age group is there, this thing about it. Right. Only thing is I think pediatric, five years, six years, seven years, that's May not it. Because the hormones have not still started developing exactly. in that. So once we start about uh, thing, like it, it can start in the adolescent age group. By the mm -hmm. time we detect they're into the reproductive age group, mm -hmm. it is basically affecting the reproductive age group because that is the time we look at the sexual life, pregnancy, infertility, it is at its zenith but doesn't mean anything in the perimenopausal age group menopausal age group mm -hmm. no age is this thing after you under, undergo a hysterectomy you can still get endometriosis at any time okay. when yeah. i say it is environmental insect which is increasing we are exposed to that every time so just any because age you group. have a hysterectomy just because doesn't you've got it removed, mean it doesn't anything mean. that's an important message yes. to have as well let's talk a little bit about contraceptive use does that affect endometriosis we get this question often 
So yeah, can let, that be a problem? See, let me tell you, contraceptive use it may actually help preventing or decreasing the endometriosis because mm -hmm. we are not allowing the uh, hormones which are being produced inside the body to act. We are taking it over into thing and we are giving a hormone. We said it is the disharmony which is causing. Right. So right. we are giving the adequate amount of estrogen progesterone in a balanced way into the body which is suppressing the brain impulses to the ovary. Mm -hmm. That is what we do in co contraceptive pills. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We are stopping the impulses coming from the brain it, which acts on the ovary and the egg releases. Mm -hmm. So when that is completely cut off and this hormones which we are supplying is the normal natural hormone the way we want it to be mm -hmm. that it is actually helps so this is the basic basic treatment when we start treating the endometriotic True. patients so people often come and say if I'm on an oral contraceptive pill what are some of the the things Other that ways, me? can yes. I have endometriosis because of it no, and now we can is something we can tell that it will not cause endometriosis right. in fact it can cure it not exactly cure suppress Help. it yes. suppress it is the word <laughs> we would use it yeah. Very good. so what um, so we can divide our treatments mainly into medical management and surgical management management so let's elaborate on that a bit. What is the medical management we do and what is the surgical procedures that we end up having to do for endometriosis? See, when the, a woman comes to us first, we need to understand what is our goal. See, mm -hmm. we have to, we should not fit our uh, patient and the problem into the solution we have. Right. We should be looking at what are the, what is the problem she has and then give the solutions and options to her. Okay. So understand your goal. Did she come to you because of the pain? Okay. Did she come to you because of infertility? That okay. is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. The second thing, understand the disease uh, pattern, the patient patterns which go with it. Does she have any other autoimmune diseases also mm -hmm. or the disease itself, what is happening? And please discuss with the patient that there is nothing called cure. We only talk about remissions and relapses. Mm -hmm. We are talking about suppressing the disease and how it is important. So if she wants to have a child, then have a child, then again suppress the disease so that it does not come back again. So that is something which is very important. Finally, mm -hmm. always talk to them about it is a multidisciplinary thing. Mm -hmm. So we are going to take care of only the disease part of it. But if it's come to pain, you might need pain management. If it, if you are going through depression because of this, please go and talk to the thing. Or maybe the counseling, the family support, everything. That mm -hmm. is all very, very important. Then saying that again, like you said, when it even if it is pain or infertility, we again divide it into three actually, mm -hmm. medical, conservative not touching anything no touch which i think many patients would be very happy, happy that, about definitely. it which, which is not the it's again a myth that it works in it so then when do we you do that no touch technique and then exactly. medical and the surgical that's when we look the treatment is completely different for both the thing pain and um, the thing. Right. so when we are looking at uh, pain we'll be more aggressive in treating because we don't want the recurrence we look mm -hmm. at recurrence how much of the patients can come get it back 50 to 80 percent of the patient that disease is going to come back so we be uh, we'll be aggressive in removing the amount of disease mm -hmm. whereas when we are looking at infertility it is less aggressive because we don't want to end up losing the ovarian tissue so everything depends on what the patient wants okay. and when it comes to medical it is always whenever a patient comes to me and asks me about endometriosis treatment I always tell them this is a locally invasive disease mm -hmm. it is like cancer but not cancer right right mm -hmm. so don't get scared it is cancer it's not cancer but like cancer it is going to come back again and again and again so you cannot tell it is cured that is first thing mm -hmm. second thing like in cancer we remove the disease what we see and then suppress it like how we give chemotherapy for them mm -hmm. we would be giving medical management for them right right so it is going to be almost lifelong you have to be on it as long as your hormone support is needed mm -hmm. so that is the way we look at it so surgery is always the gold standard okay but definitely laparoscopy is the gold standard not open surgery can we talk a little bit about what we do in that surgical procedure yeah. so they can get an idea? What we do in that, depending on whether it is ovarian endometriosis or extra ovarian, like I said, right. it can be anywhere there. So when we go inside with the telescope, we can have a panoramic view of everything, wherever the disease is, wherever on the uh, surface of the peritoneum, wherever mm -hmm. it is. So if it's only surface endometriosis, right. we just have to fulgurate or excise that. But mm -hmm. if it's a deep, in, deep infiltrating, mm -hmm. we have to excise every bit of endometriosis what we see. And the most common site being the ectovaginal septum that is behind, between the bubble loop mm -hmm. and the uterus. Okay, so that is the reason they have so much of pain during passing motion. I mean the right. whole quality of life, even regular natural calls mm -hmm. are painful. Sometimes when they have a bladder endometriosis, they start bleeding from the urine whenever and whenever and they'll have lots of pain during passing the urine i mean it's a terrible disease for a woman to have so wherever it is we do the excision is the thing if it's extra ovarian we go on to the eccentric surgeries where you know elaboratively if it is bladder is involved we remove some amount of bladder along with it with the bubble we remove the shaving part of it or remove mm -hmm. the, the part where it is you know and then do 
reanastomosis. Right. If it's near the ureter and pressing on the ureter, we do ureterolysis where we separate the ureter and keep it safely away from the disease. Mm -hmm. And there is something most of the time it is the broad ligament, but we call it as the layer which lines the complete uterus and everything which is completely studded with that which we will not right. see. So in laparoscopy we have a green filter which we, we see mm -hmm. where all the implants will be there and we will be completely excising it. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the ovary, we always look at how to save the ovarian function. It's always like this, you know, balancing the mm -hmm. ovarian function, the natural hormones of the woman versus removing the thing. Right. So when it comes to infertility, what we do is we go to the cyst and we just remove the whole cyst wall. Mm -hmm. Can we remove the whole thing? Sometimes it might become very difficult to remove the whole sure, thing. Sure. Then 90 percent of the cyst wall we will be removing by using laparoscopy mm -hmm. and then the bit which is not able to remove then we burn it off at least mm -hmm. coagulate it. Or nowadays we have better techniques like you know instilling vasopressin into the layer so the right. hydrodissection and the whole cyst wall comes out. Right. So whatever we do we put it into endo bag and then remove it because again mm -hmm. if that tissue touches any skin mm -hmm. it can implant there and cause again the scar endometriosis. Right. After cesarean also so we do have scar endometriosis, mm -hmm. you know, Bhavani, yes, that's, that's what I'm saying. Yes. So even when we remove the baby and the endometrium touches the skin, we they can, can have this. Yeah. So this is the thing, like if the patient has a tendency to develop, they are, it's just a waiting so for an opportunity to come. That's yeah. it. It will not leave it. One cell can become like, you know, totipotent cell and then the chest. Similar to cancer, later. but not cancer. I yes, think. like so I said, it, so it is much more easier for me to explain to the patient when I say that it is not cancer, but it is like cancer. So you be clear that what exactly are you looking at? Is it for the pain or the pregnancy? And this is what you might mm -hmm. get it back. So how we have to see that after delivery, you don't get it back. So I think it's a counseling which makes a huge difference in it and the open mindedness of the patient to understand rather than going into depression because of the, just the thinking that I have a disease, why should why me, why should I get True. and that is the first common thing, first thing which we see with the patient is why me, I say you are not the only one, we have so much of the incidents nowadays. Is that it is safe to say that it's a good relationship to be had between the patients and the doctors to understand it? It is very important. It is very important. I always tell a girl, you know, you make uh, a closest friend after your mom would be your gynecologist, which you have to choose from your because True. it's a lifetime friend for you, for you, whatever happens when it comes to your diseases or the deliveries or anything. One person you should trust is your gynecologist. Is your gynecologist. Can we also say that sometimes when we finish a surgical removal procedure, right. um, is it possible to say that we might have uh, further surgeries as well? Yes, it's sometimes important for them that's to know what that, recurrent it? endometriosis, that's what I was telling you. Mm -hmm. And again, when a woman comes back with recurrent endometriosis, again, mm -hmm. we look at it, what is the size of the cyst and did she finish her family or not? Right. Then if she finishes her family and pain is not so much, then we just look at suppressing the symptomatic treatment and right. stop it. Or we can just instill a Mirena, that is a progesterone releasing intrauterine right. device mm -hmm. so that her pain and quality of life is okay, fine. But if it is symptomatic or it is increasing in size, or there is a, a associated other fallopian tube problems or anything, we have to repeat, do the surgery again. So that is a thing. So I know Dr. Manjula, you have done a lot of research into this yes. and I know that you've done stem cell therapy yes. research as well. So can we talk about what the future can be based on your research? I think see, these are the cases when we are looking at infertility in the primary ovarian failures or even menopausal, they are you know, 35, 38 and then mm -hmm. they are almost attaining and the uh, poor ovarian reserve cases, you mm -hmm. know. The stem cell in gynecology and reproductive age group has in two places has a huge role. Mm -hmm. One is into the ovary, one mm -hmm. is into the endometrium. So okay. That's what we are looking at. Mm -hmm. So in the reproductive people where the uh, poor ovarian reserve, is there any FSH more than 10 or right. uh, 12, where mm -hmm. the ovarian um, out output is not so good, the quality of eggs are not so good. Mm -hmm. So we do know that there are so many uh, millions of oocytes are there inside the ovary. Mm -hmm. But over a time, we hardly use about maybe 600 eggs in the whole lifespan. Mm -hmm. What is <laughs> happening to the rest of the things? They're still True. inside. True. They're not thinking of coming back. So how can we stimulate them into coming back in, into these mm -hmm. people who are already underwent uh, the ovarian failure. Right. So every failure like we know, you know, prematurely can happen again because of the environmental hazards or radiation or viral infections or anything. Mm -hmm. So that's when what we do is we take out the autologous stem cell from the woman mm -hmm. and then we still laparoscopically into the into the stroma mm -hmm. of the thing where the vascularity would be there right. and, the, and the whole uh, ovarian reserve is there. Mm -hmm. We stimulate it by 
by giving this. So what happens with these stem cells? It forms a pluripotent cell, and the autologous bone marrow cell has the same uh, cell line as that of the ovary and the uh, endometrium. Mm -hmm. So it stimulates that, and we do get the FSH coming down from 50, 60 to normal to five, mm -hmm. six, and that we do have lots of pregnancies going on right now. And the best part of all this is that we do double thing. One is stem cell, one is PRP also we utilize. Mm -hmm. So we have the growth factors also acting from PRP. Okay. So stem cell looks at you know the the oocytes and everything which has gone mm -hmm. into the uh, hiding okay. and this will stimulate the, um, the the growth factors which will help in the circulation, new angiogenesis of the ovary. Okay. So we look at double the marker in that we always you know we always will mange more types. So we always <laughs> want more for the woman and better. more thing. And then when it comes to endometrium where you know there's a lot of additions, HMN or thinned out endometrium mm -hmm. where aplasias will be there or hypoplasias are there. That's when again you know sub endometrial region we put lots of punctures with okay. the thing and then we instill the endo uh, stem cell and the PRP. So endometrial lining regenerates again. So then again, it bed becomes good for the pregnancy to sit there. So, that's so what has we it look at. helped uh, manage, managing infertility and how do you see it progressing forward? See, let me tell you one thing, when there is no other chance for this is the last chance, right? We just finished one uh, 80 um, case um, study and we have finalized that thing and all when we have seen huge uh, thing only cases where you a lot of Asherman grade 3 is there or mm -hmm. complete fibrosis where we are not able to stimulate the new angiogenesis that's when we do have did have a issue that not much of a result we could see but in ovary mm -hmm. even in um, primary ovarian failures we did see the volume has increased number of cells have increased mm -hmm. and we have ongoing pregnancies of almost we have delivered two cases and mm -hmm. then we have ongoing pregnancies of almost seven to eight cases so I think uh, I think there's so much. That's still a lot way to go, but still there's a beginning which we started, so we will go. I think I think that's a great that's way a to huge, look forward. Yes. Yeah, we know stem cells related to cancer, yeah. but this is something that we can think use. of in reproductive yeah. usage. Exactly. That's okay. Great. Wow. So we, I know we've talked about endometriosis being similar to cancer, but not being right. cancer. So can endometriosis cause cancer though? Yes, definitely. See, when we were speaking about, uh, we said there is some things because of environment, what is happening is the whole gene processes in the body are being altered. Right. That's the reason, the whole thing. So there, we, there is a registry, we know that everywhere it happens, the cancer registries and all that. They have mm -hmm. seen that um, almost the 20 times increased amount of cancers will be seen in these people who are suffering from endometriosis and autoimmune diseases are also seen more mm -hmm. in these people. What are the cancers? Are we looking at only ovarian cancers? No. Ovarian mm -hmm. cancer is seen only less than 1%. Right. Right, in right. endometriosis but the other cancers like any endocrine cancers it can be the uh, kidney thyroid mm -hmm. it can be breast it can be mm -hmm. colon it can be melanoma all the and ALL too mm -hmm. all these cancers are increased in this so the immunological aspect is what we are looking at see these are the people who have a it's like a time bomb waiting to be thing. and this hits it it can be an environmental issue which is uh, the same mm -hmm. common factor in that or is it because they have become susceptible to more of that because of the hormonal changes? Because we right. do know endocrines are all linked, mm -hmm. so it could be because of that. But they do have increased incidence of uh, cancers, not just ovarian, not mm -hmm. the clear cell, not the endometrial cell. They will be there in one percent, but rest of the cancers are also increased in these people. Aside from the environmental management, is there any way we, anything we can do to prevent it? Or? I think I, I think high degree of suspicion that the degree disease might be there and being aggressively managing it is right. something you yes. know. Rather than thinking of, I get these mothers sometimes. I'm telling you, it is pain to explain to them because first thing they will see in our India, uh, a taboo is first thing is for any scar for an unmarried girl. So mm. surgery itself is a taboo for anything. First thing they say she has to get married, she has to get married. We say yes she has to get married but her quality of life she had 14 years till 24 yes. years is still there. Yes. You have to look at her career and everything too. So they will always want something which is non-touch like I said. Exactly. The patient, the girl is in some painkillers. They don't understand the side effects, the amount of painkillers can cause to the kidney and everything. Yes. And the be worst part is they get one surgery done over but they do not follow the next medical management when we say in spite of us telling that this disease can come back again mm -hmm. so the girl has to be on a low dose OC pills or some some hormonal mm -hmm. management mm -hmm. till they think of pregnancy so if the girl had went at surgery at 15 mm -hmm. 16 years of right. age or 18 mm -hmm. years of age means she'll have to take an OC pill for about seven or eight years at least till they think of pregnancy mm -hmm. and in the meantime they will be meeting Tom Dick and Harry everybody who has everything to say everybody becomes a doctor everybody knows <laughs> everything you you're taking hormones that is very dangerous the doctors will say like that only don't take hormones it causes cancer so they stop it they come back with the recurrence of the endometriosis and again it's like you did surgery it came back again 
in spite of us telling everything that it is a recurrent disease there's something like that so this is a, it's very easy for us to make uh, the children understand mm -hmm. but the parents become a big best thing True. because it is it's natural for the parents side to think about they want to see they want to be protective over the child and all and subjecting mm -hmm. her to the surgery but they need they need to understand one thing any parent out there is that disease is more dangerous than the medication or the treatment True. which a doctor is telling True. once they understand that that's when and second point what they have to understand is that by avoiding the proper surgery or treatment at this time mm -hmm. you are actually pushing the daughter into a well because there is a disease which is worsening inside mm -hmm. it is going to change the anatomy because of the additions mm -hmm. so future her future is future pregnancies and everything is going to be crucified her sexual life is going to be crucified her chance of pregnancy the tubal anatomy mm -hmm. is going to be gone and um, ovary the type of uh, the the because of the cyst itself mm -hmm. the pressure there will not be any ovulatory functioning which is happening the type of quality sure. of egg which comes out is going to be bad yeah. so these are the patient who will not do well in spite of ivf even in ivf mm. the results are going to be bad in the patient with endometriosis right so we need to understand the disease to know how aggressive we need to go for the treatment in these cases it's it's important for people to get themselves educated with the right. diagnosis that's what we have to keep stressing again absolutely and again. exactly um before i end can you tell us some nice anecdotal stories about how doc internet has helped <laughs> so we've just uh, talking about this thing nowadays it has become a fa this thing i would say it is important to go through master health checkups and everything so mm -hmm. every company has these rules of master health checkups and everything so of they course. would go and they will get young girls 25 30 35 whatever okay then they don't have any symptoms huh? okay <laughs> just the master health checkups they will get okay. it done then the ones can बिकॉज मास्टर हेल्थ चेकअप स्कैन कैसा रहता है सब लोग आ जाते हैं स्कैन करते रहते हैं सो द टर्मिनोलॉजी इन द रिपोर्ट विल बी वेरी वेरी ए कॉम्प्लेक्स ओवेरियन सिस्ट सो दे वुड नॉट से इट कुड बी हेमरेजिक इट कुड बी कॉर्पस लुटियम सो दट वुड बी अ कॉम्प्लेक्स ओवेरियन सिस्ट नो द लेडी गोस होम Yeah. Mm -hmm. she doesn't know that it is very clearly written there in the master health checkups you will have a free physician checkup free gynecologist checkup mm -hmm. they don't they don't have time for that <laughs> they'll have to come back to that later okay? okay so they go home in the whole night what do they do they are all google doctors of course. they want to become doctor overnight of so they don't understand the tests are ordered by doctors so give them back let them decipher and give tell us and then mm -hmm. we listen to them no mm -hmm. so it's a complex ovarian cyst so they'll read everything about the ovarian cyst complex ovarian cyst sir not mm -hmm. a simple cyst <laughs> then by next day they will only go and then get the ca125 everything that oh wow by themselves oh wow then the ca125 will come 35 45 something like that which okay. is higher than normal and the lab gives in the end this is increased in ovarian cancers for clinical correlation and okay. all that's it okay so they'll come he comes to me and then she says doctor I I know I am having ovarian cancer I have been detected I know that I know so what can you tell me how many months I have to stay so that I can I can settle everything I am like oh excuse me what exam can we start from the beginning what <laughs> happened so it is nothing but a simple corpus luteum cyst yes, and they no. them which would have disappeared <laughs> in a month which they themselves detect to be a ovarian cancer and CA125 increases in thousands of things it can increase in endometriosis it True. can increase with any inflammation of the lining True. so let the doctors what they have to understand is you have taken 24 hours to read that and get it done but these people have taken 20 years to read whatever they have done see there is a lot of huge difference in what True. the deciphering comes True. so wait give back the results to the doctor let them decipher and give the final this thing to you if you are not happy with your doctor go for second opinion but Take, take the opinions yes. you don't make opinions take the opinions of the yes. doctors this yes. is what i would like to say yes that sounds wonderful thank you so much for this thank conversation thank you pleasure is mine